Uh, welcome once again to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me today is Rosemary Olosh. Yes. Um, Rosemary, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Sure. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Rosemary. Um, as you've been told, um, my name is Rosemary mm -hmm. Olwoj. Uh -huh. um, I originally come from Kenya, mm -hmm. though right now I am an American citizen. Mm -hmm. I am a born again Christian, also an ordained pastor, mm -hmm. though I'm also a professional nurse. Okay, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Well, so, um, pastor, you said you're ordained pastor. I mean, up to this morning, I had a question coming from a cinema, mm -hmm. and he posed some basic questions like, how do we meet the Holy Spirit? We have been hearing about this guy coming back for many years and still not coming anywhere yet. Um, for me, there's some questions I answer to people, and then again, there's some I just simply don't. Um, the reality is that if people will learn to read the Word of God themselves, they would recognize that God told them that in the last days, many false prophets will rise and deceive men, right? And when listen to people like those stating, well, Christ is about to return, I never showed up. They must recognize that a thousand years in the sight of man is nothing more but a day in the presence of God. Um, from your religious beliefs and spiritual background, what word would you have to say to the, the cinema out there who, who thinks he is so smart that God doesn't really exist or he doesn't care? What, what would you want to say about those people? Um, what I'd like to say is that um, it's unfortunate because um, when I was doing my, I actually went to do nursing because I wanted to go so much into scientific study studies mm -hmm. and um, to answer this question I think I would I will use my nursing profession to sure. answer the question uh, when I was studying nursing I studied a, a, a topic called uh, physiology and anatomy which studies the cells of the human beings from the smallest one mm -hmm. And when you, when you, you know, in fact, uh, biology is, de de is defined as the study of life. Mm -hmm. And um, in the study of life, there's no life that can come into existence without cells. And cells can only cause life if cells can only cause a human being or an orga organism to form if there's life in the cells. And the life in the cells cannot come from anywhere else apart from God. Um, as much as we would like to debate and deny the existence of God, I would also wish to say at this particular point mm -hmm. that there are so many, you know, scenarios or circumstances or even features that we have uh, around us that really show that to be, to be sincere enough, there is no scientific hand or any human hand that could be able to perform the circumstances or the scenarios that we have around us. So it just takes us to, you know, it takes us to be willing to believe. From the scientific point of view, if, the cell, if a cell has to have life in, or, in order to form life, then we have to ask ourselves the question, where did the life in the cell come from? Who created the life? That life came from God. Without God putting the cell, the life, life in a cell, in the sperm of a man or in the ovum of a woman that, you know, come together and form the human life, there is no way that life will come forth. So there, there's a lot of evidence to teach us naturally about the existence of God and if we are willing enough to humble ourselves and accept the realities then we will come to know that God is, is, is God is there uh, absolutely I think um, one of the problems and I always believe you can't you shouldn't even waste time um, discussing anything with atheists um, you can't be for God and against him at the same time and there are just some of those who are generally seeking wisdom, seeking knowledge. Um, if you don't have a heart of discernment or God and speak to your heart to speak to those people, I just don't even think you should waste breath. Sometimes speaking to these people, 
Um, but more importantly is when you have a generation that eyes are veiled with darkness are filled to no acknowledge the fact that there is a superior being and that's speaking within the, the fleshly mind of the carnal man. There is a superior being. No one couldn't create themselves. The word of God declared from the beginning he had created Adam and Eve. Adam was molded out of the dust and God breathed into his nostrils and then he became a living soul. And all life created from that point. He spoke light into darkness. The earth was full of void and he said, let there be light. There was light. Now, if people don't believe in those simple principles, what sense does it make then speaking to people like those? But give me your opinion about this younger generation we're living with now. Because you can speak now to the cow come home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a waste of breath. Uh, how do we educate a younger generation for this time of season? Um, there is still hope mm -hmm. to the young generation. Mm -hmm. First of all, if there's any young generation that is watching, just know you are loved and mm -hmm. you're being prayed for. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the Bible says that unless God opens our eyes, mm -hmm. we cannot be able to discern the things that are spiritual. Mm -hmm. So for you young generation actually to believe, it is also the duty of the older people, of the people, or the people who know God, mm -hmm. to pray. That is why when Jesus Christ came on earth, he didn't just start preaching immediately. He went, he fasted, he went to the wilderness, he fasted. You know, you read uh, the Bible in the book of John 17, Jesus is taking time to pray for his disciples and even those who are going to come. So I know there's a lot of hopelessness in this particular day and generation. You know, many people are experiencing darkness, darkness of surely where do I go? Who do I believe? But I would like to give you the confidence that the God that I believe in, the God of the Bible, is the God that comes. The na his name is Emmanuel. Um, and let me mention briefly here, being an African from an African background, I would like to tell anybody that is watching right now, you may be saying that where I'm living right now, it's very hard for me to know God. I want to tell you that I'm an, an African. I come from a background where, you know, as much as we had religion, but there's, there was no much talk about, you know, God. There was so much talk about tradition, you know, witchcraft and culture. But the living God came for me, revealed himself to me. So I would like to inform you that uh, you may find it so difficult or doubt that will I be able to know God? First of all, the God I serve is able to find you. Number two, um, I know there are groups of, you know, a generation who is older than you, pastors like us. We don't just speak to you. We pray for you wherever you are. And the hand of God is able to touch you anywhere that you are, you know, at any time to change you, to touch your mind. The Bible says that there are strongholds in the minds of men and women that prevent the, the entrance of the word of God. You would like to believe, but there are hindrances in your mind. That is why we pray that those hindrances come out of your mind, your eyes, so that you're able you know, to believe in the word of God. But I would like you to have hope that you, there is somebody that is praying with you. The Bible says if two or three agree in a, on a matter, then it shall be done. So you are being prayed for, and also we will not give up. We, we, some, those of us who are called to be pastors and preachers, we don't give up. We will continue to, to tell you whether you tell us to shut up, whether you tell us no, it doesn't matter, whether you think it is old-fashioned, where, whether you think it is not making sense. Once we are called onto this duty, we don't give up. I'm an ass. We don't give up on patience until the last minute. Also, spiritually, we don't give up on human beings. We will be there praying for you and bringing you the word of God. God bless you. Thank you. Um, to, to fortify what you have just said also, is that people...
It's imperative to read the Word of God. It's imperative to ask God to give you a spirit of discernment. And the reason for is that in this time of season, God spoke about it, that many will rise in my name and deceive many. That it will come a time when God said, depart from me. I know you're not your workers of iniquity. It's essential to understand as a Christian, we have to be a wise Christian. We have to be an intelligent Christian. The, 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 the most important thing is to understand that who you are working amongst, and there's not everyone who say that they are a pastor is a pastor. There are a whole lot of false pastors out there, and there's a whole lot of simple people who will follow those people because they think that there is a God and they are far from God. They don't know God. They can't lead you to God. They may read the Bible generally. Anyone can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations a, minute, a million times. It doesn't make them a Christian. It, they could be just sounding brass and clean symbols. What makes a Christian a Christian is when you have been born again of the Spirit of God. That's why God spoke to Nicodemus and he said to him, you must be born again. And he said, well, how can a man enter his mother's womb and born for the second time? And Christ said, ye of the flesh is of the flesh, ye of the spirit of the, is of the spirit. We operate in two realms, the physical realm and the spiritual realm. The interpretation of the spirit cannot be comprehended by the natural body or the physical body. That's why it's so essential, as you said, uh, uh, Pastor, it's essential to pray and fast. Jesus Christ prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When you pray and fast, the same God, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ the Messiah, he knows your heart. He knows your intention. He made himself real to you. He transformed your mind. You behold, you become a new creation in the body of Christ. When you become a new creation of the, in the body of Christ, the old you, the old man, is put aside. He is buried. A new man have come forth. You understand things differently. You see things differently. You act differently. And in the process of doing that, the carnal nature around you moves away from you, which could include your own family members, your own good buddies and friends that you want to. They move from around you because you are different. Because of that different process, you come to acknowledge, hey, you know what? Man, I'm a new person. And I understand why those people move from around me because I don't do the same old things I used to before. It's at that time you come to believe that you're a new person. It's that time that you come to believe that you're a new creation in the body of Christ. While you believe in that, the Holy Spirit now knows beyond a shadow of a doubt you believe in Him. He outpour Himself into you. And that's why Christ said He shall outpour His Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will be able to prophesy in this time and season. So during this period and time, you now know that you know the true and living God. You commune with him in your private time of sleep at night when you're in, in, in the silent hours. He communicate with you. And during that communication process, he leads you into different dimensions. Now you can speak the word of God that you learn and read in the Bible for all this time and it become alive. It become flowing rivers of waters. You can now put that on the thirsty dry land or those sinner people who are thirsting for righteousness and they shall be filled with the word of God because it's the Holy Spirit that now speaking it to them through you. <laughs> That's a big mouthful. But Pastor, tell us a little bit more about um, your plans for the future, uh, what you would like to do in terms of um, changing the mind of the younger generation and leading them down a path that they can receive Christ as their Holy Savior. Yeah, first of all, I would like to, you know, tell the young generation mm -hmm. that um, of all the best, you know, the, the, the beautiful, the best things that you can ever do mm -hmm. for yourself, mm -hmm. the best thing is that you can ever do for yourself mm -hmm is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord Amen. and Savior. That is the greatest privilege that you can give yourself because when you receive Jesus, first of all, you become a child of God. Mm -hmm. You can imagine, I know we have very important people who live on earth, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that people feel privileged to be called, oh, the daughter of so-and-so, the daughter of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. But when you receive Jesus Christ, the name, you know, you become the child of God who is mm -hmm. bigger than 
you know, I love President Biden. I respect, you know, former President Trump. I respect Queen Elizabeth. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a child of God. You, you know, you are now a, a heir of the you you have the inheritance of the kingdom of, of the kingdom of god yes jesus christ says i behold i give you the keys you know mm -hmm. to open and close now um to the young generation i know you know things have come fashions high tech you know people think in this particular world that is right now you know with too much fashion high tech you know TikTok, you know uh, the language that you have to speak is this, you know, the language. I want to tell you something. I am a born-again Christian. I'm also a professional nurse. What am I trying to say? You can be still be high-tech, very fashionable, and still born again. It doesn't mean that when you get born again, then you'll become, you know, like primitive, illiterate, you know, backward. You know, so many people think that when you're born again, you know, you become, you know, backward primitive confined no there is no joy like the joy you find i know even in your own life can you imagine young people with your mom leaves you a responsibility and you do it and your mom comes said oh well done you're so happy i did the right thing when you know when you sit home and you feel i have not sinned against my fellow friends i say the truth i don't backbite them i don't you know uh, i don't like uh, instigate them to fight against each other you don't feel guilty you feel at peace when you receive jesus christ can you imagine you now have the righteousness of god you know you are going to heaven how much peace do you think you're going to have so uh to any young person that is looking at me I will tell you once again, the Bible says, test and see that the Lord is good. David, when you read Psalms 37, David says, I've been young and now I'm old. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. I want to tell you as I'm sitting here that I've, I've been saved for over 30 years. And I will tell you that of all, of all things that I could have done, there is nothing as important that I would have done as receiving Jesus Christ as, the Lord, as my Lord and Savior. It gives me the assurance of going to heaven. It gives me a stronghold right now when I have any trouble. I cry unto God. Young people, look at me. You know, picture this scenario where the, the disciples of Jesus Christ are with Jesus in this boat. And the flood, you know, this boat is, you know, has turmoil in the sea and you know the the disciples of jesus christ cry wondering and then they remember no we have jesus christ in the boat let us wake him up and jesus christ wakes up and he comes down the storm when you have jesus christ as your lord and savior you are like those disciples that had jesus christ in the boat when you have any storm you have somebody to call on there are issues around young people that you can't share with your own parents. There, there are issues that you have in life that your parents don't know about. You know, your parents don't know the disappointments that you go through, even in school. Even you, very young person that you're looking at me, maybe you're still in lower grade, high grade. You know, there are issues. You know, your parents know you have trouble. But your parents don't know how much trouble you really go through. How much those other kids, you know, really bully you. They really take away your things. They, you know, they mock you. Mm -hmm. Your parents don't know what you're going through. There are so many questions you'd like to ask that, you know, you, you don't get grown-ups to ask. Maybe your parents, even your grandmother cannot answer all of them. Even as we are talking here, some of them we can't even answer. But I'm telling you one thing. When you know Jesus Christ as your Lord, you, as your Lord and Savior, you have somebody you can ask, you can call on. You know, Psalms 23, David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He shall be your shepherd when you are still young, day by day, as you finish school, as you go to college, as you plan other things, you know, you get into this big, big world. What job do I want? Who do I want to marry? How do I start my family? How do I invest? So many questions that you have. There is somebody that when you have, you can pray and he will show you the will of God that you ought to be doing in your life. Another thing is when it comes to the understanding of the word of God. I would like to mention here that the Bible is the only unique book in the world. 
Why? The Bible is a living book who has somebody who comes out to speak to people. That's why the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When you open the Bible to read, the person who is in the Bible, who is Jesus Christ, likes it, and he will come out and teach you. I got saved by reading the Bible on my own until I got saved and went out, you know, and asked to be prayed for in order to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So don't be scared. How will I understand the word of God? Shall I be able to walk in this thing called salvation? Shall I be able to understand God? Every day when you take time to just read a little scripture in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and you put up Psalms and you put up Proverbs, you will be growing and God will be revealing himself to you. When God reveals himself to you, you will be able to discern or to know because I got saved when I was in, in a religion that was still preaching Christianity. When I started reading the word of God, I had to go and ask them, how comes the Bible says this and how comes this is what you're preaching? I started preaching before I even got saved because my religion was saying, you don't get saved when you are on earth, when you, you get saved after you die. And I went and asked, how can I get saved after I die? And yet the Bible, you know, Jesus is telling his disciples in Mark chapter 16 from verses 15. Go, you, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whoever does not believe shall be damned. So I asked, how can I believe when I'm dead? I cannot be saved when I'm dead because I will not hear what is being preached. So this salvation is for the living who can hear and believe. I cannot believe when I'm dead. The Bible says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That is in the book of you know, Romans from verse 9 to 10. So when, when you take time to, you know, read the word of god the god of the bible will reveal himself to you you shall be able to discern even the wrong teachings reading the bible benefits you first of all it is the most beautiful book that you can ever read you can imagine when the bible says you know he who sits in the secret there are so many beautiful verses there is wisdom young people you want to be wise read the bible it has wisdom it is you know uh, Psalms uh, 119, 105 says, you know, the word of God is a light unto my feet. Even if you, you, you are not deciding to be saved today, reading the Bible will give you wisdom. It will shape you. It will teach you how to talk and even to relate to people. So just start reading. You know, don't see the Bible as a very hard book to read. No, just open. Just read little by little. You can read uh, Genesis 1. Which just says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. You don't have to read a lot of it. Just little by little, a little Psalms, a little Old Testament, a little New Testament. But what I know is as you read the Bible, you'll know the truth. You'll overcome lies, even understand which way to go and even overcome the false prophets. Absolutely. And one key issue to always remember that repentance is very essential in the Christian life. Um, there's a sacred, God is sacred and our presence before God has to be in a sacred environment. But to get God's attention, the first thing you have to do is repent of your sinful or carnal nature that keeps you tied down to a, a world of sin. Um, that's the first thing we have to do and do it for an open heart, um, a sincere heart, because without doing that, you're not going to get God's attention. And you learn forgiveness also plays an essential role during that period of repentance. Because people can repent and of their sins, but forget to forgive folks for things that they have done in their lives. And the repentance is not really what you think it is. So the process of forgiveness and repentance goes hand in hand. And that enables you to get, capture the Holy Spirit attention. And when that is accomplished, God takes over in your life and he leads you in that dimension that you need to go in. Um, if the, we're coming down to the last two minutes, uh, Rosemary, 
Um, any encouraging word to the young people out there in <laughs> transforming their lives? <laughs> Yeah, what I would just like to say is, first of all, I want you to have hope anywhere you are. Mm -hmm. Know that you are not alone anytime. Mm -hmm. You have, I, you know, um, I know you are growing up in a world where there is a lot of chaos, a lot of battles, a lot of mm -hmm. bad news. Maybe sometimes as you watch, you know, you know the news and everything. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that you are loved, your parents, your family. You know, the, there are people who love you. Even the government mm -hmm. that you have loves you. And we, you know, who claim to be pastors, who are really called to serve God, whether we see you, we touch you, just know wherever we are, we still mention you in prayers. The other thing I would like to, you to, you know, to say in these uh, few minutes is that um, give yourself wisdom. Um, it's nice to go to school, acquire education, you know, but still take time to read the word of God. It will show you which way to go. It will, you know, it will show you who is your enemy. It will show you where not to go. The kind of churches, you know, that don't preach the word of God. It will help you out of that. Uh, more importantly, uh, you know, you can be cute without, you know, when you are sober. In your hopelessness, you don't have to take any alcohol or any drugs, you know. Uh, in, you know, when you feel you are down or even depressed, you know. Uh, you know, you know, a little, you know, water, some fruits, you know, a little sleep. You know, just like my, you know, brother here has mentioned forgiveness. Sometimes we feel so depressed because we are really holding on to that person's sin. You know, learn to forgive. Learn to say sorry.